This week's assortment of topics. Hamilton hot takes? We don't need them. What makes a damn good cast album? Chubby drag queens? They're just better. Have I ever watched Firefly? The answer may shock you. Johnny Depp is gross and stupid. 5G is going to kill us all. Apparently. And if you want to understand the name of this episode, you need to listen all the way to the end. In boutique. We may be awful, but, but we're, we're right. right. Hi. Hi. Good we've talked, but we morning. haven't seen each other on Skype for a while, so that's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm officially discharged from a uh, my my post surgical follow ups are no more. Oh well, that's good. That's so, good. So unless something, I mean, obviously my my sad my sad little owie belly button that had to be reconstructed is still very very much healing, and unless something goes horribly wrong with that, I don't have to go back to the doctor. Oh well, that's good. Yeah, like my week, my last couple of weeks has just been nothing but work. Well, yeah. Oh, I will say one thing though. Uh, I've been officially cleared for, you know, all you know, working full time with no restrictions. I drove yesterday. That was oh, exciting. Oh, good. Uh, and you know, I've been I've been cleared to, I've been cleared to have the sex. Oh, good. So I was gonna say, so like driving, being in the car and sitting in the most didn't make anything sore or anything. It wasn't. It wasn't as bad as it had been. But I also hadn't gone anywhere. Uh, Father's Day was the last time I was in the car. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was a few weeks ago. Yeah. But that was also, I mean, that was right around the time when I had, I went back to work too soon. I mean, I, I worked yeah. full time too soon. Um, and it just knocked me out. It just, it would just completely exhaust me. Even though all I was doing was really sitting in a chair you know? mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, so I had to, I had to really, really take it easy for a bit to kind of get back. But now, but taking that one week of doing absolutely nothing was exactly what I needed. Oh, that's I good. Bounced, I bounced right back. It just took, it took a week, but I, I, I got right back on track and now I'm, and now I'm good. But I, you know, I mean, not, not to be too personal, but it's like, it's, it's, it's been a while since the sex has happened because I've been having all these problems with my, with my undercarriage. And so, you know, I had to, I had to tell him, it's like, I'm not, a, I'm not cleared to go to pound town. Right. <laughs> but I am cleared to do some stuff. So. Oh, well, that's good. Good for you. So, so, you know, this should be a good weekend. <laughs> good, good. That's good. <laughs> and I'll say no more. <laughs> I had a little bit of fun last week because, you know, I haven't done anything other than go to work. And I mean, you know, I've gone out to dinner with mom a couple times at, you know, a outside social distancing restaurants that we can right, go to. Right, sure. Little, your um, little cafes. Yeah. But the other night or last week, I guess I had Sarah and her roommate over and they brought all this food and Sarah baked some bread and... That's awesome. We had wine and we brought the speakers out. And so anyway, so we were playing Gaelic Storm, right? Because, you know, me and Sarah are oh. Renfair friends, you know. Yes, from way back, yes. So we were playing the, the Gaelic Storm and oh, oh, and there's this other band, uh, Celtica. And oh, they have that. an album that is kind of rock with bagpipes. Ooh, I love that. And they have an album that's all movie scores <gasps> they do rock bagpipe titanic rock bagpipe uh star wars oh my god that's awesome it was really fun so anyway uh sarah was out there dancing in the yard with holding the dog 
Aww. And mom came out for a little bit, and she had a glass of wine, and she actually danced a little bit to Gaelic Storm with us. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so cute. I can't even... I can't even picture your mom dancing. Yeah, and it was just for like a minute, but she had fun, you know. Well, she did have a glass of wine, so there you yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> and then so we're going over to Sarah's tonight for, you know, a little barbecue with just a couple people that we can stay. So that'll be really fun. That's awesome. Because I know mom's been going stir crazy, too, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm glad that that I'm doing, I mean, it's it's amazing the difference that just a couple of weeks makes, but that I'm doing as so much better, but I, but I still, it's like, it's, it's now the feels like temperature right now is 103. Oh, and see, I, guarantee, I don't miss that at all. I guarantee by late afternoon, the feels like will be 110. Oh yeah. And it's I'm like, sure. it's like, you know, there, I mean, well, you know, Texas did kind of lock down again. There's all kinds mm-hmm. of restrictions now that we're yeah I read about that because because we're just, well you know the country is just filled with assholes it's it's you know we don't have to go into that everybody knows that yeah but it's like you know while people are talking about you know especially being around the fourth and everything and everything's all about their freedom and whatever it's like it it's like your freedom to give a disease to other people. Oh, it's so fucking stupid. But I I'd read, I heard a, an interesting thing on NPR the other day where they were talking about, you know, people talking about, oh, you know, their freedom to not wear a mask and what yeah. how stupid it is. But the lady brought up the point where when seatbelts became mandatory, mm-hmm. there was all these people pissing and moaning about how it was infringing upon their freedom. Right. Motorcycle yeah, because, helmets was another one. Yeah, but now it's that. just second nature and people just wear it. So it, hopefully the mask will become... I mean, it sucks. Well, you know, the thing is, you can get ones that are cute. Yeah. You don't have to look like you're going into surgery. You can... I mean, exactly. There's and so I mean, yeah, many granted, cute I mean, ones they, out there. They, it can't be denied that it sucks. But it is what it is, and you just need to shut up and do it, you know. Right, and if you really, no one's making you go out in public, you know. If you really don't want to wear a mask, fine, stay home. I know, you have you know? the freedom to stay home and order your I've... groceries online and not endanger other people. Right. You know. And, you know, and like all the, uh, well, you know, oh, masks, you know, if, if masks either work or they don't, and if they work... If, you know, if they work so well, then why are there all these other rules? It's like, because nothing is 100%, you know, birth control isn't 100%, yeah, you know, exactly. for fuck's sake. You know, it's like, you know, I just want to scream in people's faces like, well, if seat belts work so great, then how come I can't drive drunk if I want to? Ah, right. I mean, oh, to, sure. me, that's, to me, that is basically the same argument. It's just yeah, really yeah. fucking retarded. <sighs> People. And we're, we're all getting to find out which, you know, once again, we're finding out which ones of our friends are actually assholes. Oh, I know. It's, it's, there's some of them are really surprising me. And it's just like, they wouldn't dare say anything to me, but I, I see their own Facebook page. I see, I see things they're saying to other people and I'm like, oh, you're a douche. You're oh an yeah. Like I have douche. one friend in particular who I knew was a Trumpy, right? Right. Um, and because that. of that, I decided a long time ago that I was going to unfollow his oh, Facebook sure. page it's a because... Good I just don't want to see the shit that he posts, right? Right. Oh, yeah. And um, so a couple weeks ago on Father's Day, I had gone to his Facebook so I could write a happy Father's Day message, right? Right. Uh Uh-huh. And I just sort of glanced at his page, but not for too long, because it's all this stuff of... Well, you want to honor black culture, then we should be allowed to have rebel flags, because what about southern culture? Oh, god damn it. Yeah, I'm, I, 
It's it's probably a good thing that I haven't been out physically in the world. Uh, yeah. Because my impulse to smack the fuck out of people, my hands would be hurting right oh, now. Oh, yeah, and I was like, oh, thank God I'm not on his feed anymore that I see that stuff because, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin our friendship. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's just, yeah. Oh, I had, I had, here, here's something. And I actually, um, I tweeted about this the other day, but so, uh, this one woman I know who she's, you know, she's a little older. It's kind of sad because I, I, when I think about it, she's not that much older than me, but she might as well be a hundred. Mm-hmm. As far as I'm concerned, compared to how I feel at my own age, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I guess I'm technically I'm an old lady now too, but she posted this obnoxious. No one should be allowed to vote by mail. We, you know, we should all, you know. And then one of her friends said, "So why are why are you saying that I shouldn't be allowed to vote by mail? Like I have I have reasons why I." why I should be allowed to vote by mail. And then she, and then Diane actually goes, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I vote by mail, but that's because I have a bad hip and I can't stand up for a while. It's like, God damn it. God damn it. Everyone, I swear to God, everyone who's bitching about voting by mail, they're all, they all vote by mail. Have you noticed that? Because they're all fucking well, old people. Well, and I think what it is, it's all the Republicans and the Trumpies are the ones that are but bitching about it. But every one of them it. vote by mail because they're all old. Yeah. Because they feel like more people will vote if they allow vote by mail. And exactly. therefore, Trump has no possible way of winning. If, if I had to stand in line for 10 hours, I would still do it. Because that's how much I fucking want to vote people out. Oh, I know, but, oh, it's so, yeah, it's so scary. But I encourage everyone, it's like, what, you know, voting early, do it. There, I don't, I don't think there's a state that doesn't have some kind of early voting thing. When uh -uh. you vote early, you don't have to go to your precinct place. You can go anywhere. You can go whenever you fucking want. It's like, the second you have a day where you can go vote, like, oh, I could go vote today. Go do it. Get it over with. Go do it. You know, so that so that as it gets closer, you don't have the shit. I can't go now because my life is blowing up. It's like, yeah, just go do it. Yeah, and you know, Paul Stanley has been very, very active online getting people to go vote. He's such a joy to follow lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And who would have thought, you know, that he really is just a wonderful, beautiful liberal person? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's weird how he and Gene just became two very... I mean, they when they were younger, they seemed very, very similar in personality. Yeah. And God, as they've gotten older, they're just... Gene is such a cranky old man. And, and, not and I good think way. when it comes down to it, Gene's probably really socially liberal. I guess. But I think, but I think I he's gotten to a point where he doesn't want to show it. But I wouldn't be surprised if he secretly voted for Trump. Oh, because it's all about the money, you know. I fucking know he did. Yeah, Trump I'm is, sure. Trump you is know? good for rich sure. people. <laughs> Trump, Trump is good for money bags guys like him. Whoa, what a tangent that was. <laughs> you know, but that's okay. That's okay. Can I just say one one quick thing, uh, just because it's it's timely. Well, it's timely as of us recording this. So now that Hamilton is available for people to see, uh, people who might not have the connections to get a bootleg, like I yeah. am, uh, but you know, all pretty and high def and close ups and. Whew, now was God. it was it filming a, a theater performance or is yeah. it a movie? No, it's it's filming a theater. They filmed like I think five different performances in the theater. You know. Oh, okay. Because I was aware that Disney was showing it and it was a big deal, but I didn't know if it was they had made a movie or if it was the theater. No, they they made a point of 
they wanted, if there was ever going to be a movie of it, they wanted it to be a movie of the actual stage performance because okay. the way it's staged is a big part of why it's so great. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. taking it out of the theater, it wouldn't be Hamilton anymore. Yeah, you know? yeah. It just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that. It, it is what it is. But all these people, and you know, and we've talked before about, you know, fandom things and, and people getting angry at other people's opinions about Star Wars or whatever, you know, it's like, but like, when it comes to something like Hamilton, I mean, Hamilton is weird because it's a Broadway show and the vast, vast, vast majority of Broadway shows, no one cares about, no one, people don't know about it and it's fine. You know, it's always been musical theater nerds. We're the only ones who know about these things and we just keep to ourselves and it's fine. But Hamilton has become such a huge thing. And all these people who normally wouldn't be interested in it are finding that they're that there's something to like in musical theater and stuff, and that's totally cool. Mm-hmm. But still, there are plenty of people who are like, eh, either they don't care, they're not interested, or they saw it and they're like, eh, you know, it didn't really do anything for me. And that is fine. Yeah. But I will say, nobody needs your fucking think pieces. Nobody needs you to write an essay to get fucking clicks on why you don't like Hamilton. It's unnecessary. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, it's unnecessary it's, for anything. Really. Yeah. <laughs> but know? right now, you know, hashtag Hamilton, hashtag Hamilton film is like, it will not stop trending. It is like the hugest thing. And it's like, it's a way of getting attention for yourself. You're basically telling the world, I need attention today. So I'm mm-hmm. going to talk about why I don't like Hamilton because they don't accurately address the fact that the founding fathers had slaves. Okay. They referenced it, but that's not what the play is about. Everything yeah. can't be about everything. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's literally based on an 800 page book. There's a lot of shit that ain't in this play. And really it's, I mean, slavery comes up a lot because there are abolitionists in this, in this story. You know, there's, it's, you know, it can't be, everything isn't for everybody. And we've said that before. You know, like, like we've talked about, you know, musical theater and stuff. We've talked about that a lot. But, like, there's there are shows that you love that I've never seen because I never had any interest in yeah, seeing exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. And that's fine. Right. Because what is the point of going, well, I don't even want to see Les Mis. Yeah. You know, I can say that, well, I've never seen it. It just, you know, I never, I, I, nothing ever drew me to see it. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, period. That's it. There is, I have no more opinion about it because I've never seen it. You know, it's like, I don't, there's no reason for me to go on and on and on about all the shit I didn't see. If, why, why do people, and there, there was a great quote. Oh my God. There's, because there's always the Star Wars factions, you know. There was a great tweet that I shared the other day that this guy was like, you know, the thing about Star Wars is that they could make an individual movie based on everyone's personal opinions. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and and they would still, if they could make a personal, personally crafted movie for someone, and that asshole would still complain. Oh, absolutely. And that is just utterly true about everything everything yeah oh i know (laughs) and i mean honestly you can you can love hamilton or hate hamilton but the but the objective truth is there has never been a more attractive assemblage of humans than the original cast of hamilton they are the most gorgeous like stunningly beautiful group of people that Mm -hmm. have ever been on a stage together and i don't think there's any way to argue against that (laughs) Oh, God, yeah. Fuck, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and I kind of feel the same way about Rent. 
Mm-hmm. Because I, it was phenomenally popular, and I remember my ex was really into it, and we oh listened to that soundtrack over and over and over. Remember, I yeah. saw it with you. You took me. We did. And I really enjoyed it. But I've listened to that soundtrack a lot. And in fact, we listened to it the other night, the Gaelic Storm Night that I was just talking about. <laughs> you you were we went on a that? <laughs> and somehow ended up listening to the Rent soundtrack because Sarah's roommate's a big fan of it. Oh wow, okay. And there are some songs that I really, really, really like in it. Yeah. But to me the vast majority of the soundtrack is not songs. It's just weird stuff put together to make the story, but it's not individual songs to me. Well, there, there are, yeah, because there's, and that's well, that's kind of, I think that's kind of common in a lot of musical theater, where yeah. you have songs that exist to advance the plot, and then you have other songs. Yeah, and I think the difference of with Rent is, it's all sung. Which right. Which is a difference. Right. But this, I never fully went with the mania of it. Right. Because I just didn't think the soundtrack was that good because to me, most of it is not songs. Right. Like you could pick out like your three or four hit singles. I'll call them yeah. the hit singles. And then the rest yeah. of it is just is not songs. But I'm, but I understand it, you know. But I'm, I'm that way about like almost every musical that I like where there's, there's the songs that I can listen to at any time on any day. And then there's, if you know, but like the whole soundtrack as a whole, I shouldn't be calling it a soundtrack. I should be calling it a cast album. I know I, I'm, it's sacrilegious to call oh, it a right. soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's like the, like, like I love, I loved Wicked when I saw it. When I took that, God, that year was the best year for season tickets. Cause that was the year I, cause I, I, I had a different date for every show of that season. You went with me to rent Jan went with me to Avenue Q. Mom went with me to, to Wicked. And my husband went with me to Spamalot. And then the other show was Legally Blonde, and I just didn't go. I sold those tickets. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember you telling me that, yeah. And, you know, I, I probably would have liked Legally Blonde, but I just, eh, I didn't care. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but like, like Wicked, for example, there are like three songs in Wicked that, like if I'm making like a playlist to listen to in the uh. car... Those three songs are going to be in every playlist because I like singing them in the car. Now, is the rest of the album like that, like 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 Rent, where it's more story, or is it songs? No, it's songs. It's uh-huh. just that they're not. They're very show specific. They're, they're just very. They're much more show specific. Oh, okay. They're just songs that aren't easily plucked out. Yeah, because I just remember like old musicals like you know a chorus line in a, the, the whiz or oh my god or even the classics you know my fair lady pippin right you know all those it's songs whereas right. it seems like musical theater now it's it's less songs and more the whole show which is cool when you're seeing it yeah. but it doesn't make for a good listening experience to me well, you and, there, and there's and there's shows like like Fun Home, Fun Home has a lot of an excessive amount of dialogue on on the album that really it makes it makes it kind of like unless you're listening to the whole album from beginning to end, you don't need any of this other shit. Yeah. Like I literally when I plug my phone in in my car, you know how and I I don't know if if it's only an iPhone thing or if, if any phone that has, you know, MP3 player in it, if they all do this, but like it will automatically take in its little phone brain, an alphabetical list of all of your music. Mm -hmm. And it will immediately start playing the first track alphabetically. And in the case of my phone, it's a track from the Fun Home soundtrack called A Flare for the Dramatic. And you hear this little ting, and then you hear Allison reading a, le- a letter from her father. And then her roommate goes, hey, Allison. And it's like, I, oh, it pisses me off. <laughs> it makes me really mad. And it's like, I, I wish, I, I really feel like I may just delete that one track. But right. then the next so <laughs> track would be... Um, 
AUM from that one MC Yogi oh, album. Oh, yeah. And well, if I deleted that, start with. Yeah. if I deleted that, then the first thing that would come up would be Aaron Burser from, from Hamilton, and that would be nicer. But yeah. I would <laughs> then I would become sick of it. Yeah, I would become yeah, fucking yeah. sick of the of the int of the very beginning of Aaron Burr, sir, and I don't want to be sick of it. I have no idea where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but it was all about cast albums, but yeah. Yeah, but it's weird. Like I remember, like I used to be, like you know, my mom always had every cast album. Oh, my mom did too. Because you know, fucking and carousel. I used to love. I listened to the Wiz a lot, <laughs> which I've seen. I mean, oh I don't God, think they'll I, I, ever do that show again because it's so dated. They'll never do it I've again, only, and that's I've fine. I've only ever seen the the movie. I don't know. I think it would, I think a, a, a well, they did that that live. You know, like when they were doing the live theater stuff on TV. Uh huh. They did. They did the Wiz one. Oh, night. did they? It was. I I I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but I kind of got sucked into it, and. That was way better than I thought it was going to be. And there were a lot of people in it that I didn't know could sing. Oh, see, that's cool. And they were great. Like, really, I mean, it was, that's the kind of shit that, when they do that kind of stuff that I like. Yeah, and I remember, too, I used to listen to the A Chorus Line soundtrack over and over and over. I had, like, every word of every song memorized. I'd listen to that album so much. Oh, my God. But you know what? It's so dated. It it's doesn't very dated. stand up the test of time at all. It 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 lasted. I would never ever ever go see a, a, a new version of that show because I don't the think music I would see is it so now. dated to me. I think the I think I think when I saw it, it was probably ten fifteen years ago. Uh huh. Um. But you know it's weird because it's it is so of its time and yeah. it was it felt very timeless then and because it it so perfectly kind of demonstrates the whole being you know being a dancer and going to auditions and the yeah. shit so there was always going to be an audience for it but it's very thematically it's it just does I don't think it would I don't I don't think it would work. I don't think it would work now. Do you know that I have that a, a friend of mine was was in chorus line for a few years on Broadway? Oh no, that's cool. Yes, and she she was Judy, and she happened to be uh, in it during the period where um, Mikhail Baryshnikov, when he defected and came here, and he was like the biggest star in America for a while uh. there. He he had a TV special called like Barishnikov on Broadway, or something like that, uh-huh. and it was like him and Liza Minnelli, and all of a sudden like they would like work themselves into big musical numbers from from hit Broadway shows, and it ended with a cor- with the big the big finale of Chorus Line, and it was the cast of Chorus Line is what did it, and so my friend was on the Barishnikov Broadway TV oh, special. And there's cool. all these pictures of her. I mean, there's literally a picture of her in wearing nothing but a towel because it was afterwards hanging uh, out. And she's standing backstage in a towel and with 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 Mikhail Barishnikov. How fabulous. It's amazing. It's such a it's like it's very cool. <laughs> Well, that's fabulous. It's pretty fucking fabulous. <laughs> and her ex husband was the original, um, the original, original Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, okay. But they had already, by the time they made the original cast album, they had already, he had already left the show, and they had a new Seymour. So whenever I listen to the original cast album of Little Shop, it always, I mean, I like the Seymour that's on there, but he's not really the original Seymour. Yeah. And I'm totally the Poindexter that would point that out to anyone who would be listening to it. And again, that's another show. I've listened to that soundtrack a whole bunch because I've been surrounded by fans of it forever. Yeah. Oh yeah. I never connected with it. I just don't like it. Yeah. Well, I don't it have was, anything yeah. against it. Right. I just don't like it. It's a very, it's a very specific sort of show. And I, I mean, it's like, I think, well, there, there, there's like, there's a lot of people who lean towards the more traditional musical 
And so anything that doesn't fall and it's, and it's not a good or bad thing. It's just, you know, there's like a structure and it's like things that fall into the certain musical structure. There are people who like, they tend to skew that direction. And then there's people who tend to skew in the other direction. And it's like, that's just, I mean, but it's like, it's like having an opinion about any kind of music. Oh yeah. I mean, I would enjoy seeing the show because I've never gotten to see it live. And I would enjoy it. Is it is pretty amazing. I would live. love it. But at the same time, I've never really connected with the music. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I did, I did see a thing one time. Someone was sharing a bunch of pictures on Facebook. There was a production. I think it was in, it may have been West End. It may have been in London. Um, a, a production of Little Shop where rather than having like a big puppet of the plant... The plant was just basically played by a big drag queen. Oh, how interesting! And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I could totally, I could totally be down with that. I mean, I don't know how certain aspects of it would go uh-huh. because you know the plant has to eat people, and I don't know how they would do that. But I, you know, hey, if you're if you're staging it, you've got to come, you've got to. Figure out all the all That's your own details. That's pretty interesting, yeah. And also having it be because it's always voiced by a man, and so having it being played basically by a man, but because the plant's name is Audrey, mm-hmm. um, you know he's dressed as an Audrey. <laughs> Yeah. But in green. I mean, he kind of, he kind of, it kind of reminded me of like a green version of like Ursula from um, Little Mermaid. That's what is so funny because that's what I was envisioning. Totally. I mean, yeah, that's that's totally the way you would go. I mean, tentacles and yeah, totally. Oh, very cool. There was this drag queen in (laughs) Austin. I do not remember her real name. And she wasn't like a pro queen that would, you know, perform. But, but she, she would just, just be around be out all the time. Yeah. And everybody used to very unflatteringly call her Ursula. <laughs> God damn it. But the thing is, the fat drag queens are always my favorite. Because as like that one that we used to know, whose name is escaping me right now, but the one who used to do um, Winona Judd. You know who I'm talking about. The oh, one who yeah. Lived with, the one who lived with the worst person in the world. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. But, like, he was chubby, and so he made a really good woman. Mm-hmm. And then he lost a bunch of weight, and he was still doing drag, and it's like, oh, dude, you don't have it anymore. Like, I remember his, that. He ended up All of up his makeup like... skills were based on his own former face yeah and i remember and when he lost anymore. all that weight he ended up looking like a disease victim or something remember? yeah he, he got really really skinny yeah. and it was and it didn't I look remember. right but i remember he wasn't sick because i used to see him all the time and i yeah. you know i loved him but it was like yeah it always it always bothered me that it was like it's like well you could have left some of your fat on you just right. to make your drag better <laughs> Cause to me that would be worth it. I mean, he he was he was stunning when he I mean when he would do his Winona and stuff. Oh my and god! And I remember, he was and I can, I can picture him in my head, but for the life of me, I can't remember his name. I remember some of the people that were sort of in his entourage. I could name a bunch of like remember uh, Scarlett Lee. Oh Scarlett yeah, Scarlett Lee, yeah. the other roommate yeah. that lived in that house. Oh. Got it. Tina Morgan. Okay. The reason yes. why we couldn't remember it is because the name was so normal. That just, I don't, you know, you know how I, rem- how it popped into my head? Because I, I was thinking through, like, I, I was, I suddenly remembered that I sat with him when we went to the art, the art house movie theater to see Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Oh, okay. Because it was such an art film and it was and like nobody was seeing I remember thinking it. like he was so fine out of drag. He was really cute. I would have dated him in a heartbeat. Him and Scarlett <laughs> you know? too. Scar- Scarlett was very cute too. They were. I yeah, always thought it'd pretty. be fun to date a drag queen. Which Wouldn't it? Back then I would have done, but now I don't think I could deal with the drama because... I think I've watched too much RuPaul's Drag Race 
where I don't know oh. that I could deal with it all again. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you know, and there was I mean we knew we knew enough drag queens back in the day that we knew that some of them were you know, pretty healthy together people, and some of them were fucking tragic, and the drama yeah, that followed them around. Yeah, and it's just around. like, and I know when I when when I'm in a relationship, I got to admit, I'm no walk in the park to deal with. Well, not and imagine <laughs> me combined with all the drama of dating the drag queen. Oh, honey, you know we would be, oh. there would be there would be death would occur. <laughs> But like, but like the first six months would be so great and every party would be epic. Oh yeah. But yeah, it would be a really bad combination. Oh yeah. 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 That's. But alas, and at this point in my life, that will never happen. So, (laughs) you know, that is off my bucket list. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you could go bang a drag queen sometime, you know, that would be fun. I don't think, you know, weirdly, you know, I don't think I never have. Isn't that weird? Yeah. That I've known. Yeah, it does. It's a, I mean, by sheer numbers alone. I mean, the odds are that there would have been a drag queen in there somewhere. That's true, that I maybe just didn't know. <laughs> just by the you know. sheer numbers that we're talking about. <laughs> I remember being at the bathhouse in Austin. Mm. And... Oh. I don't know if it's there anymore. God, either the bathhouse or this, but you know they had a maze, and there was glory <laughs> holes in the maze, right? Oh God! Oh God! And I remember one, you know, when people would, you know, it's supposed to be anonymous, but people would always peep through the glory holes to see if it was somebody that they wanted to be with, you know? Right. So they would obviously someone they wanted to be with, but then the weird fantasy of anonymous, right? And I remember when seeing like this long, this finger come through with this long green painted nail, like beckoning (gasps) through the hole. That's kind of fabulous. Yes, but I was also like, yeah, no. Oh my God. I I love, I love imagining that though. That's really funny. Breathe deeply, deeply. The Year of Woo. I don't think I'd ever gotten a response from you. And if I did, I don't remember, but I sent you an article regarding the weird people about the 5G and how they're tying it in with COVID and the government. Oh, that they went, because the 5G people before COVID happened, they all thought we were all going to get, like, brain cancer or yes. something. Yes. And then COVID happened, they're like, ah, see, see. Yeah. And they're tying it into that. But it's yeah. become a whole new thing. And the reason why I... And, of this, course, it's from the Illuminati. Yes. The reason why <laughs> this is brought to my attention is because my dear friend, who we've talked about in previous... Uh, who is a who is a rabid anti-vaxxer and a crazy ufo slash illuminati person right posted something on facebook and i was like oh my god this is so weird and when i had sent you that i didn't realize that it's a thing oh it's a thing i thought it was like this one-off crazy person it's a thing that no the 5g thing is huge I think, I, I wouldn't be surprised, I haven't checked, but uh, I think Alex Jones might be part of the 5G stirring that shit. So what it is, is like, I'd never heard of it before in this context. Yeah. But what it is, is, okay, 5G is a U.S. military weapon. <laughs> okay. Biological U.S. military weapon that is, you know, infecting people with COVID. That's, you know, a long oh, thing. Oh, sure. That, you know, the, the because thing. obviously. But because yeah, of course. It's a yes. U.S. military weapon. Mm-hmm. They already have the vaccine. They've had the vaccine since this was released. Oh, I'm so sure they developed the vaccine in advance. What they're doing is they're creating yes. the vaccine. I mean, they're creating all the sickness and this panic. So then the vaccine can come. 
and then the vaccine is going to be mind controlled by the Illuminati. Of course, of course it will. That's the latest of the five G thing. Oh my god! Well, you U.S. know, military the... weapon, Illuminati. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and you know it's so funny because remember when has it has it been a couple months since uh, since I did the woo segment about about orgon and organites. I don't think it's been that long. Maybe five or six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Because five G gets tied into that shit mm-hmm. too. But I think that was like the pre-COVID five G stuff. Yeah. Because that was when it was that five G was just this kind of electro pulse thing that was going to come out of cell phone towers. Yeah. And it was going to like kill us all or whatever and the looney tunes orgone people will take their little orgone pyramids and whatnot and they will sneak into the areas where the cell phone towers are and they'll put a little pyramid like on the ground i mean they're these little things yeah, put it yeah. next to the tower because it will like rebalance the energy around the tower so, and they, it's like, oh, well, they're going to gift. They would call it gifting. Mm-hmm. The, I, you know, like they go, they go on Amazon or whatever and they buy an organite and then they <laughs> gift it to the, to the universe by sneaking over and putting it there. But the thing is that it's supposed to like neutralize that tower. But that's the thing that's so funny is if they truly believe that, then why are they so worried about 5G? Because... Just go gift some more fucking pyramids then and you'll and you'll save the whole world and you can stop whining about it. <laughs> but I but see I could totally see because it's clearly it doesn't surprise me that InfoWars or whatever gets tied into that shit because it goes along with chemtrails. It goes along with, you know... Oh, God, the goddamn chemtrails. You oh, know, please. they're putting chemicals in the water that makes the frogs gay. You know, you know, all that shit, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's all the same bullshit. Oh my God. And you know, my friend believes in all of it, all of it. I just don't, I have enough stress in my life. I don't need to add government conspiracy shit on top oh of my God. everything else. But you know... She could just go down to the Target and buy herself some essential oils. I know. And you know. Or drink some apple cider vinegar. (laughs) Drink some apple cider vinegar. I mean, because you know, all you got to do, you you need, it's a requirement that you get the oil diffuser and and the oils because they're essential. It's right there in the name. I know. (laughs) Or you know what you could do? You could mix the apple cider vinegar with the hydrogen peroxide. A tablespoon of that will solve everything. Oh, my God. (laughs) And a sage suppository. (laughs) Oh! Oh. Your shit would smell like a Thanksgiving dinner. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I might could become rich. My making sage suppository. By making sage suppository. You could put them in like, um, like the vegan oh gelatin my capsules. Oh God. That is crazy enough to, I could be probably become rich by making those, huh? Shove a little sage up there. Oh my God. Because the thing is, all you have to do is say you're, you know, it's based on ancient you know, Atlantean wisdom. <laughs> I mean, because it know. wouldn't harm anybody. No, because it's just sage. It, I mean, it's it stupid probably, as fuck. But God, I bet I'd make burn. a lot of money. You yeah. know, maybe sage. Enemas, I mean, obviously you can sage eat it. Douches. Ugh. Hit me as douches. <laughs> you could use all different kinds of, you know, all different kinds of formulations to make your cooch smell like a Carolina pine forest. <laughs> Oh my god. The scary thing is, it would probably sell. There's always a market for the woo. Always. 
Oh god damn it! Gwen, anyway, Gwen, you you could pay, you could partner up with Gwyneth Paltrow. She could market that shit, and you'd be a gazillionaire. Oh god, she's stupid. Anyway, but she has a candle that not only she has, does she have a candle that smells like her vagina, she has another one that smells like her orgasm. Oh, I hate it! I hate it. And it's not anti women. It's just uh, anti stupidity. Anti. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow and her fucking nonsense. You know her next one's going to be This Candle Smells Like My Farts. Oh, God. And people will buy it. I gotta and... say, I'm I'm, I'm curious what, what she thinks her orgasm smells like. Oh, God. It would be really amazingly brave of her if, like, there was, like, a, like a slight tuna odor to it or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like... Mm, smells like garbage. <laughs> now there's about 20 of them out there. What will we do? Don't worry, we're safe in here. They'll never get in. Why is it that in every zombie story, people always think that their safe haven is invulnerable? I know. It's like, hello, the walkers are totally going to get in. You better get ready for it. Diane, get behind me! No, it's not stopping! Do something, Jack! And another thing, how come nobody in a zombie story has ever seen a zombie story? Do you know how much time in human life would be saved if just one person in the group was up on the genre? What do we do? Aim Aim for for the the head! head. What? Aim Aim for for the the head. head! You heard them! Aim for the head! Quick, Diane, I think we should try and fix the barricades. I think we should listen to them. Now that's the first good idea they've had all episode. I still don't think they're going to make it. Aim for the Head, a weekly podcast covering the hit AMC programs The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. Join hosts Diana and Steve as they recap and discuss the latest episodes. Aim for the Head, available on iTunes. You can also follow them on Facebook. Serenity, the movie that's like the Firefly. Movie. Yeah, yeah. So it was on. Like I, I was out of the room. My husband had turned it on, like while he was working on dinner or something. And I came down and I kept like I looked and I immediately knew. Okay, this is this is Firefly. Like I'm seeing people and I can tell that combination of people means Firefly. And. After you know, after a while, I'm thinking, well, no one shows Firefly, or or is it like a special thing, like some cable channel decided to show? Yeah, all I don't the know if they do or not. Like I've never, I've never seen that happen, but it, it, but it could happen. So I'm just like watching, and I realize a lot of time has gone by, and it's like, well, this can't be an episode of Firefly. Like it's not. It's been too long, and it's mm-hmm. not over, and whatever. So, I had to ask him. I was like, is this? Firefly or is it Serenity? And he's like, oh, it's Serenity. And it got me thinking about how how there's so many people that I know who would be so fucking appalled and just shocked to hear me go, is this Firefly? You know, it's oh, like... Oh, I know. Me too. Yeah. I know yeah. what Firefly is, but I can honestly say that I've... I've been in the room twice now because it yeah. happened once before in my life uh, when the Serenity movie was on. So I've seen, but not understood, lots of bits from Serenity. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever seen even 30 seconds of Firefly. And I remember I did watch it. I've seen the whole season. Yeah. And I've seen Serenity and I remember really liking it. But it was so long ago that I don't even remember. Right. And that makes me a bad fan because other fans, you know, science fiction fans were so into it. Yeah. If you like these three things, you have to also like Firefly. And it's it's not that I don't like Firefly. I have no fucking opinion about Firefly. Oh, yeah. I liked it, it, but I can't tell you anything about it. Yeah. (laughs) I know who's in it. I can name, like, at least half the cast by name, because I know who those people are. 
but I have I've never had any desire to watch it and I can't explain why because I'm sure I would like it just fine but there is a certain amount of I already know that the thing about Firefly is that it was over too fast and it just got canceled and it never it couldn't wrap yeah. up or anything. So I know, like, why would I watch something knowing that when I get to the last episode, I'm going to be disappointed yeah. because there isn't any more. And the movie, because I've seen the movie and I know how it ends the movie is not going to be satisfying as an end for that series for me. I yeah, already know how it ends. People love that show though. And I remember really liking it, but I, sure. you know, but there are so many people who like people will make references like the other day. Oh, what was it that I said? I, I made some, what was like a normal everyday comment and someone, like on Twitter, like I said something in response to something on Twitter and I made a statement that's a statement I would normally make. And of course, it's so common that I can't even think of what it was because it was so nothing. But some rando responded to me saying, oh, I, I spot a brown coat. And I had to think about it for a minute. I was like, does that, is that Firefly? Does that, does that mean Firefly? Oh. So I Googled and I Googled the thing that I said with Firefly after it. Mm -hmm. And I found out, okay, so whoever that character is that Adam Baldwin plays, is it Jane? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who his character is because I don't yeah. care. Apparently, he must have said it at least once. And apparently, people have made a meme. Oh, yeah. Like a picture of him and that statement. And I'm like... Oh, so it's a yeah, thing. Apparently, it's a thing. And it's like, but it, he, he didn't invent it. So it's, it's just like a, a, it's like a laugh while you can monkey boy kind of thing. <laughs> and, well, it is, except that that at least was, I mean, that would have never been said in any other context. Okay. This would be like if I said, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. I mean, oh, like, okay. you know, just, it, you know, just some standard saying that was nothing. And, oh, it's a fucking Firefly thing. Oh, God. And I decided not to respond because I didn't want to admit to this total stranger that I don't, I've never watched Firefly. Uh -huh. Because I would be shamed. I would I would be publicly shamed and I didn't feel like it. Oh, because I you know. know. Yeah. I mean, I was, I'm, I, my whole life I've been the kind of person who pretends that I get Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want Dungeons and Dragons people to think I'm not cool. Oh, I know. And you know what I don't, you know, me being like the super fan that I, you know, used to be or was of at the course. time. I, even though it had Lucy Lawless in it, mm. even though I was a big fan of the original, I have not seen more than 20 minutes of Battlestar Galactica. Me either. Me and either. I don't care. And I know people love it and think it's fabulous. And, and they, I'm sure I yeah. would like it. I'm sure I would like it, but... But you know why I won't see it? The lead actor is ugly. Who's the lead actor? The guy that plays Adama. Some pockmarked old fart. I don't know. Oh, it's Edward James Olmos. Okay, and I'm sorry. I, yeah. If the lead actor's not hot, I ain't watching it. So Lauren Green was hot? No. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Lauren Green is the kind of daddy that you go for? No, but the, like, you know, Star, <laughs> you know, the other, you know, the characters in the original ones were kind of there hot. Was, there know. was so much hotness in the original Battlestar. It was all about hotness. That show, because really, hotness was the reason why I watched it. Yeah, because I was like, I, you know, I just don't care enough. I'm not going to watch this stern, ugly old fuck. I don't care. Yeah. And especially because, you know, when things are getting remade, there's a really good chance it's going to be horrible. And it wasn't until that show was on for probably five years before I realized, oh, is that still on? And people are saying it's oh, good. Oh, no, it was supposed to be really, really, really good. But on yeah. the other hand, it's still like, I loved the original because it was stupid. It was cheesy. It was fun. It was just as good as Buck Rogers was. Yeah, and I don't God want it, something ruined by a, a you know a goddamn serious storyline. True. Yeah, you there know. was. I mean, anyone who got anyone who got super super serious about the original Battlestar Galactica. 
But then again, I felt the same way about the when I when I realized that most people who liked Star Trek originally mm-hmm. were like they thought of it as this really serious thing because I didn't it didn't even occur to me that there was anything to take seriously about Star Trek because when I was a kid it was that funny show that my dad liked so much mm-hmm. that was hilarious and had like space babes you know, like it, I didn't know there was anything to be taken seriously about yeah, that show. Yeah, but looking back, it was really issue based. It but really it was. was. It so was so cheesy that to us yeah. as younger or as younger people at the time, right. you know. I mean, it really it you know going back and looking we at it, we saw it as cheesy and out of context. You and, know, and it was really kind of amazing for its time, mm-hmm. the kind of shit that it was putting on television you know, in its own cheesy way, but it was doing it. And it, well, that's one of those things like when people, you know, when Star Trek Discovery came along and there were like, you know, there's like a gay couple and all these, you know, like, oh, oh, almost every major character is a, is a woman of color. It's like, oh, well, that's not acceptable. And people like, oh, it's all PC. Oh, oh, Star Trek's all PC now. It's like Star Trek invented PC, you Oh, totally. It was, it was like one of the original politically correct well i mean not even politically correct it was just liberal as fuck we oh, could just call yeah. it that now i was I a mean, big trekkie and i could always understand the references but i remember like being at cons and people making all these battlestar galactica references and i'd just be like huh and it oh was God. weird that i didn't get them and like another thing that people always thought i hate the Pirates of the Caribbean movie so much. <laughs> I think I've maybe seen half of the first one. I hate no, those I know, movies. I know you saw the second one because you came to see it with me on my birthday when I forced us all to dress as pirates. Oh, did I? Okay. Oh, because that was okay. when that was the second one. Okay. Because I liked the first one, That's but they why. weren't okay. good after that. I, they weren't good. I after hate that. those movies. I hate Johnny Depp. He annoys the fuck out of me. I don't understand the references. And if people think that, you know, I'm supposed to be like this super fan and they're always shocked when I don't get the references. You know? Yeah, and I don't I don't understand how the crossover for I I guess yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean is one of those things where it's like that kind of pirate Renfair crossover. Because yeah. I don't see how there's an automatic subset of Pirates of the Caribbean fans within general fandom like i don't like sci-fi because because there's like the sci-fi ren fair yeah heavy metal music overlap you know there's all that but like i don't i don't know why the fucking pirates of the caribbean movies get shoehorned into that like i don't see it how somehow that does and you know von lichtenstein mm. very very into the pirates of the caribbean Honestly, I I saw the first one despite Johnny Depp being in it, because the first time I saw a teaser trailer for it was uh, the day that Return of the King opened, and oh, I was okay. there with friends, and it was like, oh, Orlando Bloom is going to be in the Pirates. Of- oh well, in that case, maybe maybe we'll go see it because yeah, like, I remember that now. Yeah, see that with you, I do remember that, and I remember yeah. really not liking it. <laughs> Well, it's like, it was, it was only okay. Like the first one, anything that was good about the first one, it, and God, by this, I I think they made a fourth one, but I never saw it. I saw the third one because like Chow Yun Fat was in it and all these people that were like, what, wait, we're going to, it's like, it was, so it's like Xena now we're going to China. It's like, what you know, and I was like, well, I'm intrigued by the idea. Like, even though the second one wasn't much but the third one was so fucking bad. It was you know, so but it was like, painful. I hate Johnny Depp. I hate the character. What is his name? What is that character's name? What is the... Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Isn't, isn't it Jack Sparrow? Jack Sparrow, that's right. I hate him. Johnny Depp was hot in Nightmare on Elm Street when he was like I'm Nightmare 17. on Elm Street, exactly. Yeah. Pretty In his little half shirt. Yes, that was hot. <laughs> sure. But I think he's a giant douchebag. It's weird. There was like a brief period, like when he did like, like Ed Wood, like I really loved Ed Wood. 
And I was like, well, that God, was maybe a good he's... movie. I enjoyed that. And yeah. I was like, well, maybe he's not. You know, maybe he's not so bad because he really like if he can really appreciate Ed Wood and wanting to make that movie so fucking great. And it's like, you know, and really celebrate Ed Wood, which is such a strange thing for anyone to want to do. But I was so down for it. Yeah. But then when he's just. Because, you know, Facebook memories, things will pop up. And I guess it was maybe four or five years ago. Whenever that fucking Lone Ranger thing where Johnny Depp played Tonto. Um, I mean, I already thought he was a douche, but he did an interview because I was apparently I ranted about it on Facebook and then uh. it came up in my memories. Um, he was doing an interview where he was because, of course, there was nothing. There, everything about I mean, Tonto already not a very sensitive portrayal yeah. of any sort of And movie who movie. on earth would go see a Lone Ranger movie? Oh, God. Who the fuck I... would go see that? I hope it bombed. Oh, I think it did. I think it did. But the thing was that was so really, really fucking... I mean, there were so many things out of all the things that were offensive about Johnny Depp playing Tonto and what he did and what he looked like and how he acted and everything. He did an interview where he was trying to justify playing Tonto. Mm -hmm. And he actually said, and this is the kind of thing that I really fucking hate when people do, you know, I have Native American blood. Oh, please. And he goes Chickasaw or Creek or something. Like he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know, but it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter because in his mind, it doesn't matter. As long, it, it, and he said, but it really definitely informed my portrayal of this character. It's oh, like, please. you don't even know what you claimed you are. It's like, if, if, you, if you were like, okay, I came from Chickasaw people, and uh-huh. I know all about the Chickasaw, and I decided to play Tonto as Chickasaw, and yeah. I'm being authentic... Okay, but yeah. you don't even know what you're talking about. And it's like, it, well, it's kind of, you know, not to go into a political thing, but that's one of the reasons why I get pissed off when people go after Elizabeth Warren for believing for so long that she had Native American uh-huh. ancestry. Because, she, well, she's from fucking Oklahoma. I mean, if your family lived in Oklahoma for more than a few generations, there's a pretty good fucking chance. If that you do, yeah. Because that's where we forced them all to live. But, you know, and I can, you know, I was born on the military base that is that was so old that Geronimo died there because that's where we imprisoned him. But, you know, it's like, you know, Oklahoma, disgusting horrible place. Yep. But so many white people have been told that they have Native American ancestry. And most of them don't know anything specific, but there's a lot of, like, family lore. And until genetic testing came along, no one fucking knew. I'm sorry, Johnny Depp never had any family lore about that. Because even even if his grandmother claimed it, the odds of it actually being true... You know, and until genetic testing, because that was the thing that was, I thought it was kind of sad because if there's something you always believed about your family, because why would your family lie? And it's like generation after generation, they've been saying this. She had no reason to believe that it wasn't true. And then she gets her 23andMe test back and find out she has absolutely no Uh Native American blood of any sort. And it's like, that would suck. Oh, yeah. I mean, granted, when my parents got theirs done all it did was prove to us oh yeah we're white Uh we're white as fuck like the most you know exotic quote blood we have is german like we don't even go any further south than germany that's how fucking white we are but you can't fault someone for believing what their family told them but at the same time if you're gonna believe that you really really are something you, then you better have 
you better have at least gone, yeah, and I was really interested, so I read a lot of books and oh, I met yeah, people. Oh, Johnny Depp was never interested in that before. No. Please. He just wanted he just wanted to say, oh, and he also uh what was a couple years ago, one of those she she poo poo high end fashion slash jewelry slash fragrance companies mm-hmm. they did a fragrance a men's fragrance i believe it would have been pronounced sauvage mm-hmm. because it was savage but with a u in it oh and johnny depp even after all that tonto shit and he knows how much we fucking hate him and he knows how bad that was yeah he was the spokesman he was the face of salvage oh god that's how awful he is he's just garbage you know i just hate him i hate his voice i think he's ugly i hate him i just hate him (laughs) and he walks around with like scarves and beads and it's like what are, what are you, Steven Tyler? What yeah, and it's not a popular opinion to hate him, but God, and, and, you know, and Von Lichtenstein <laughs> thinks he's so hot. Yeah, but... But it's not, I, I don't even think yeah. she thinks he's hot. I think she has sexual fantasies about Jack Sparrow. Oh, that's, that's totally it. That's yeah. 100% it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... You know, because she's very, and I just, and I remember, like, every time I think of Harry Potter... I think of Von Lichtenstein. Really? You don't think of me? <laughs> uh, because she would talk about serious Black, and you could hear the masturbation in her voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So every time anything Harry Potter, I think of Von oh, Lichtenstein. And you, th- you know it's sad. endless talking about serious Black. Serious Black. Oh, Lord. You know, it's actually really sad that we lost touch with Verity Noslin before Harry Potter came along. Oh, because I know, because you know how she how it, she was into the dark. She was in it. She would have been so torn because it was such a huge fandom. It had the dark that she goes for, but her her Christian sensibilities would have been really disturbed. And oh, so she, true. it would have, it would have almost made it more titillating for her. And between Sirius Black and and Snape, and all these, you know, she would have been really, <laughs> really secretly into Harry Potter. I really oh, I that. know. I'm just imagining like a very strong relationship with Verity Noslin, a corn cob, and Snape. <laughs> Well, there's our title. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh my God. (laughs) Verity Noslin, the court comes. People would be like, what? Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you! talking about you know the odds and the numbers or whatever i mean i had i fucked enough dudes that i fucked two different guys named ralph i mean come I on never i don't think i've ever been you've, with the ralph you've never that been with I know ralph. Of. <laughs> well yeah come to think of it there are a few out there that i have no fucking idea i have no memory of what their names were but i feel like if i ever knew that they were a ralph i would remember because i'd be god damn it another ralph yeah, and I've said I really want to have sex with somebody named Devin. 
I've never had sex with a Devin. And every time I've met a Devin, they've been hot. Yeah. Yeah. Really what is it weird. with Devins? I know. <laughs> I know. There's something... I think part of it is that no one of our de- generation was named Devin. I think yeah. it's that all, de- all Devins are younger than us, and I think yeah. that has something to do with it. <laughs> 